All right, so before we get into the real specifics of the Synthi V, let's first just go through a bit of the user interface and sort of get an idea of where everything is, kind of a lay of the land, so we can just have a bit of overview. Now the Synthi V is laid out actually pretty simply. It does have a lot that you can look at, but it's all here for us to see, and really most of the control is going to take place without having to go too much further than here, at least as far as synthesis is concerned. If we look at the top, we have the toolbar, and this is where we have our settings and things like that, like we saw before. We can go into the browser or find presets however we want to cycle through up here. We can also bring out the advanced options with this down arrow, which we'll come back to shortly. And there's also the MIDI assign, so we can assign any of these knobs to a MIDI CC number if you have a controller. And if you just turn it, it will learn the one that you have selected. You can set the minimum, maximum, etc. And then you can save your configurations, import, export, so however you want to have your MIDI laid out, you can do that and set it like so. In the middle where the actual synth is, this is called the panel. And then at the bottom we have the lower toolbar, and you'll see a lot of helpful information down here. If we hover over any knob, you'll see in the bottom left a readout of whatever you're looking at. So if you need an extra description of what you're hovering over, you have both the value in the box to the right and a further description in the lower toolbar. So that's just helpful so you can get a better idea. And speaking of values, just clicking and dragging obviously to move knobs. You can also right click and drag to fine tune or you can also control or command click to do that same fine tuning. And then you can double click to reset to a default value. And that's certainly helpful. Also on the lower toolbar, we can select a different way to use the pin matrix. Modern mode just transfers the signals exactly as they're written in the pin matrix, so theoretically perfect. But in reality, the synthy didn't work exactly perfect. There were little quirks like crosstalk and signal loss between neighboring pins on rows and columns of the matrix, so you can simulate that with the vintage mode. You can also set the polyphony. Monophonic is obviously one note, but you can also have polyphony. So you can play more than one key at a time or just have it be monophonic with one voice. You can also undo down here, make your changes, and you can look at the history of whatever it is. You can go back to whatever steps of undoing and redoing if you want to make any changes that you may have made while working. Then you can change the MIDI channel, and there's also a panic button, so if you have any hanging notes or anything like that, maybe too long of a decay, you can just hit the panic button and it'll cut off all sound from the synth. And then there's also a CPU monitor just to keep track of your resources in that sense. So at this point, pretty standard Arturia sort of stuff. Most of their synthesizers sort of have this user interface. But now let's kind of take a tour of the more specific synthy aspects of this instrument. And like I said, the panel here is where we're going to spend a lot of our time. We have our oscillators on this side here, and then a noise generator. Those will be where the sound comes from. And you'll notice that we have a few different colors of these knobs. And those are actually coded for a reason. Blue knobs are going to be related to some sort of frequency control. So obviously the frequency itself is blue. Or frequencies of filters, anything like that. All that sort of things that would be related to frequencies or rates. Those will be blue. Green are just the secondary functions of a module. In this oscillator module, that happens to be the shape of the oscillator. But that can vary. White knobs are output levels. So volumes, just outputs of any of the different modules that they will be putting through to wherever they're going. Yellow knobs are also secondary, but they are related to filters. So you know that yellow just goes to a filter in some way. And finally, red are envelope knobs. So a nice way to kind of keep track of some of the different functions of these knobs without having to worry too much about other things. But even without the color coding, it's organized pretty simply. We have our oscillators and noise generator. So these are the modules that will output sound that we'll edit later with other things like filters and envelopes, etc. And over here, these two modules handle the output. So we have just the output volumes, pans, as well as the output filters that we can deal with. And there's also a main volume above the pin matrix. On the right side, we have filters, sample and hold, ring modulation, envelope shaper reverberation range, and then also the joystick. And then all of these different sections can be put to use and linked to each other just by clicking and adding pins to the pin matrix in the middle here. So rather than doing things in a modular synth like you would take a patch wire from one module and put it into another, 
or whatever sort of thing like that. This is just a matter of finding what you're working with for sources or treatments, etc., into the inputs that would be found in the columns. So you're just linking the row and column, and it'll highlight which one you're dealing with for either. So it's a very powerful and simple way to do all that sort of routing. And of course, we are going to get a lot more in detail with the pin matrix later, but that's a little bit of an overview. Down at the bottom of the panel, we have the keyboard. And obviously, you can click around and just play notes there. But you can also do things like program, sequences, all that sort of deal. So it does give you some added functionality. Going into the advanced features, this is where we have things like functions. So we can click and add in certain movement that we can assign to parameters. The joystick gives us different destinations that we can link again. And then we can just move it around. And this is, of course, related to the joystick on the front panel. And then going back into the advanced features, the modulations tab gives us another little matrix that we can deal with, linking control sources to other destinations. And effects are, of course, just an effects on the output of the synthesis to add that extra polish. So now we do have a nice overview over everything in the Synthy V. And as we move forward, we're going to get a better idea of how all of these different pieces kind of fit together and work in different ways in conjunction with each other. But it's just helpful to kind of get this first look at everything before getting too far into the nitty gritty. But with that, we're ready to move on in the next video into the different modules of the Synthy V panel. So I will see you in the next video.